and your mercy. Ladies, I think we've got a few gentlemen in here. Please welcome again Tyrese. People. All week we've been, uh, or last week we were qualifying people to be here, and I tell you, I couldn't go to the grocery store, Tyrese, without people that knew me stopping me in line going, Michelle, what's up with that Tyrese? Can you get me in? And I appreciate y'all. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. <laughs> you gotta excuse me because I'm off for like an hour and a half of sleep, wow. but I'm, I'm here, and I'm, I'm very honored to be here. Y'all could be anywhere in the city. I just appreciate y'all showing up and uh, leaving work. Probably got nannies at the house watching the show. Uh, I'm very grateful. Thank you very much. Uh, we are grateful to have you. Um, I wonder if people have been waiting. They want pictures. Can we do the pictures first? Do you mind? I would love to get some Q and A's going before we get straight into the pictures, if you don't mind. Um, All right, you guys, the target speaks. Like, like so it's what a, the man wants. I feel like we don't have an opportunity to get to know each other. It's just about photo ops and Instagram. You, know? so, you better preach. I, 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 I do got to go to an autograph signing over at DTLR when I leave here, but, you know, I might like pick. <laughs> um, so, you know, All right, well, well, let's do this. Uh, really, again, I, uh, as Tyrese is, I am as proud of this music as he is probably. Well, probably not as proud as he is, but I am proud of just um, R&B, grown folks R&B. Yes. Yes. And you guys, you listen to my show here on Magic 102.3, 10 till 3, and you hear me play Shame. And a couple of times you may have heard me because... You, you could tell my face was all smushed up, like, woo! You know, it's one of those close your eyes, turn the lights out in the studio kinds of songs. So, Tyrese, um, let, let's take some uh, audience questions because I know you have some. Anybody you want to go first? Well, I, I just want to, let me, let me just tell y'all okay. a few things. You turn your flash off, if you don't mind, you bet. Your flash is off. Oh, 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 that's really great. <laughs> I got ADD, I'm easily distracted. <laughs> um, so I just want to give y'all a little backstory. Um, so Black Rose is my last solo album, and it has been uh, three and a half years in the making. Um, we did about 146 records to narrow it down to the 14. Um, and I was on a mission. Um, I think, I think a lot of us as R&B singers, whether we're conscious of it or not, a lot of us are very insecure, um, about the state of music because we feel like if we come out with an album and it don't have 15 rappers on it, our music won't sell and it won't get attention. And so I had to like remove myself from any and all things that seemed to be the normal thing to do and just focus on my pedigree, where I'm from. Teddy Pendergrass, Marvin Gaye, Donny Hathaway, Stevie Wonder, like that's what I know of music. I'm sorry I'm not twerking. I'm sorry I'm not, I'm not dancing and I don't know nobody named Nene. I'm sorry. I'm grown. Voice is deep. Um, I love sex. I love women. I'm, not, I'm singing to that because I want that. So you ain't got to question nothing about what I'm doing. I don't sing for dudes. I'm in tune with perfume and femininity. I know what's happening. I like leg muscles and cleavage. Okay? So we're clear. So when I'm in the studio, and I'm singing, I'm singing for you. I'm singing to affect you. I'm singing to make you feel warm and fuzzy. When you're in traffic, you ain't worried about traffic because you got this album. When your makeup and hair lady is taking too long, you put your earbuds in, you say, you take your time, I got this album. When you get in that argument and you get in the car, I want to fix that. I want to take your pain and your problems away. When somebody dies, I want you to be able to say, this album helped me to get through. 
tapped into all of that stuff and and that's what it is so you know when I think about music and the state of music right now I think about the fact that you know Luther Vandross didn't feature Curtis Blow mm. Marvin Gaye wasn't featuring Run DMC it was a straight R&B soul album with no antics it wasn't about like Marvin Gaye didn't get on the radio and be like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? My song produced by Pharrell, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like me, like me, like me. <laughs> I ain't got no name dropping for you and I ain't got 15 rappers. It's straight R&B soul. And for me, I'm on a mission to make a statement. You know, fortunately, we're all successful in our own right. It's not about who's got the most money or not. We're all independent. We got single mothers up in here, hard working women and men in the room. And we out here hustling, trying to get it. When nobody wants to buy or move into a house and lose it. So I'm just letting y'all know that if I wanted to make money, I wouldn't be in music. Because it ain't no money in music. So I'm off an hour and a half of sleep. I'm tired as a few motherfuckers. <laughs> Music wise, real. <laughs> Shit. Tyrese, we gotta get you over here. I'm like, I'll be like, you ever see somebody like wanna bounce off a ring on the and then just like, ah! I swear to God, it's been real. And you know, I didn't got used to these movie sets and promoting movies and everything is smooth. And it's like eight of us all on a press junket. You go to that city, I go to that city, we gonna all hold it down for fast and the fears. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that album said Tyrese on it, and Tyrese got to show up. I'm tired, but guess what? I love it, and everything that I'm doing is on behalf of the state of R&B. When this album ends up being number one on the R&B Billboard charts and number one on the top 200, all of them ratchet dudes and singers that's got record deals and they got all of these songs and videos coming up, all of a sudden they gonna press the pause button on that. Have a seat. You're 16, you're trying to twerk, go sit down. We focused on real music again. And that could only happen if y'all decide to show up and support music. So they may be giving y'all free CDs today because you wanted to listen. I still want you to buy it. I want you to go on your phone and download the album because when the first week of sales come up and we number one and we 150, 200,000 sold the first week, the numbers ain't for me. It's to send a message that R&B fans are still there. It sends a message that grown folks music still has a stage and a platform. And if you haven't heard the album yet, I, I, I literally, it ain't even the songs. Like y'all are gonna listen to my heart. Like it's real, it's real. It's real. You press play and you just let that thing go. <laughs> so any questions before we take pictures? Real quick, tell them how many days it took for you to do Shame to record it. It took me nine days. Nine days. And we had the song, but I couldn't record the song until my girl moved out, you know? And so when I do interviews, I'm trying to figure out what I can say to get her to come back home. I ain't been able to fix it yet, but I'm on a mission. Um, nobody, it doesn't matter who you are and how much money you have and how big your house is, the number one relationship killer and marriage killer is pride and ego. And, uh, I don't need you, I can do bad by myself. Okay, take your lonely ass off the road. Independence your way into loneliness. <laughs> I don't need you. I, okay, I need you. I'm thirsty. I want you. I desire you. I'm sorry. I'm gonna fix it. What song do you want me to sing? To get you? I'm gonna make up some shit. What you want me to do? You want me to go get your dog groomed? You want me to do your nails? Like I'm gonna fix this. So I'm just like I'm just in that vulnerable space where I'm just not trying to go about this stuff the way other all the other folks is doing it, man. I think, uh, you know, the devil's been busy breaking up our families and relationships and making it about, I got my own car, my own house, my own money, I don't need you. That shit is stupid. Right. It's just stupid. Stupid. Wow. Going to dinners with all your homegirls, venting at the table and shit. Girl, he shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Stop 
up tearing the man down. Build us up. That's right. And sometimes we don't know how to love. We got good intentions. We ain't perfect. Everything that we are is based on the images of love that we was exposed to. And sometimes we grow up in a house in an environment where everything is just wrong. And so it ain't about charity and I ain't who I look like fixing a man. I ain't finna you a little boy. I'm trying to make him into a man. That's just, oh, I hear you. I'm 36 and I don't know what you know, so teach me. Well, all right. So, all right. Teach me. Teach me. Well, yo, as I said, teach me. Well, I tell you what I say, touch me again like you did. Um, uh, well, I just, it's, it's a time thing, you know, um, outside of, you know, how challenging it was to finish this album, you know, I was dealing with a very private and public nasty custody situation, fighting for more custody of my daughter, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the fathers that still out here determined to spend more time with their kids. Um, so I landed 50-50 joint in legal custody of my baby. So pick up some drops off is real. Bedtime stories and doing homework is real for me. And uh, you can't fight for more custody and then say, well, it's about me. So I got to hit the road for eight months to, to chase a music career. I've been at it for 20 years. So I still got shows to do. But I'm trying my best to say, well, look, if you go to Houston, do Houston, Dallas, and another part of Texas, and then take your ass home. You know what I mean? Don't be out on the road for no five, six months trying to sell records. Um, and so I'm, I'm just in a different headspace, just as a father and as an entrepreneur. You don't work harder, you work smarter. So at 20 years, I don't show up to concerts just to hear women scream and the groupy stuff, like I'm grown. I've been at it for a while now, and all of the motivations that most of us male artists can find ourselves being caught up in, I'm not over it, I still love it, but it's just very different, you know? At this point, when you got the power, you ain't gotta use it, you know what I mean? It's just kind of, okay, I'm gonna do a show. All of the fans, the beautiful ladies gonna show up. Okay, so do I just lose focus of my priorities because of the screams and the high and the energy? You know, at this point, my mind is clear. I know exactly what I want and don't want. So that's just kind of what it is. But I will still do music, but I'm not doing another full album. Wow. Um, your voice is rich, pure, wonderful. Um, and you've been in the business for 20 years. The changes... I kind of, I, I, I watch you on Facebook, you're funny, you're funny, but, and, and you kind of, I don't want to say rants, but you're very... No, it is a rant. It's a rant. <laughs> <laughs> so you go on your rants. I just, I just be at home and I don't, you know, I don't get in these type of rooms every day and I'm like, man, I got to stay in touch with the people and this is the only way to do I it. Love so it. I got to, and then they all, you know, it's it's not lonely at the top if you help somebody else get there. And it's like church. Not every message is for you. Today I went to church and the pastor was talking about something that ain't got nothing to do with what I'm going through. Can I come back next week and you can talk to me, Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> when you go into your rants, and I was listening to you the day or a few days ago talk about, you know, uh, the sale of CDs and the industry. You've been in the business 20 years. Has it changed that much? Oh, it has. I mean, the days of, of people buying a full album is over. You know, you can yeah. listen, you can love the single, and you can go on iTunes and download just that song. So if a, a record label put up $250,000 because they believe in you and want to invest in you, and you got people downloading one song, then you're saying you got an opportunity to make 12 to $15 off the whole album. But I'm only gonna get you 129. <laughs> Can I have one rib? <laughs> it's like, so you got you got a dollar twenty nine versus fifteen dollars off of an album, and now it's streaming, where you can pay one ninety nine and you got all your favorite radio stations without an on air personality, back to back. So everything is different, and um, 
I'm the chairman and CEO of, of a company called Voltron Entertainment. I got a staff of 50, and uh, we got 43 projects that we are doing that are in various different phases. So as an entrepreneur, again, you're working smarter, not harder. And, you know, my, my first love and my, my real passion is music because that's how it all started. But, you know, you sit down and you say, well, look, if I got other options, what am I over here milking this same cow for as if I can't put my time and energy into something else? And it's not money motivated. It's just being smarter with your time. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, how many times you gonna do FaceTime with your daughter? Real talk. I think we have time for one more. One more. Um, Tyrese, I love your spirit and I love what you're doing, reaching out, the way you're reaching out to young people, uh, the way you give advice about God, uh, and the way you're trying to change from the rap to the mindset from yeah. the rap to the R&B. But what I'd like to ask you is, what is it within you that is that driving force that makes you want to achieve or has helped you to achieve all that you have achieved? Um, that's a good question, I like that. You look beautiful, by the way. Um, I, I Honestly, it's, um, it's not an opportunity, it's a responsibility to inspire the uninspired and motivate the unmotivated and try and reawaken the beast inside of everybody, if you can. I think um, a lot of people die before they die. And um, it, is, it, is, it is unbelievable and it's sad to witness. Like, um, and then we're, we're, we're kind of in a different uh, age where so many people are desperate for validation. Um, and they will do any means necessary for attention. And so you'll have that woman who's classy and sophisticated that don't show too much skin and wants to like say, I love God, I'm gonna save myself from my husband and just all of these things, but that's, that's not popular right now. You won't end up on the cover of a bunch of magazines until you start going through a divorce. What about highlighting a healthy, functioning, successful marriage? What about taking pictures of the man with the woman, with his kids that look happy, they're smart, they're articulate, still in school, ain't dropping out, ain't slapping nobody? What, I'm ta what about talking about that? Yes. Oh, so when you post that picture, you'll get 12 likes. And if you slap your mama, <laughs> you'll get 120 million likes. So you know what? I'm gonna keep slapping my mama. Cause everybody wants to be popular. And then the other side of it is, um, you know, and I, you know, I'm talking about this in my new book, which is called Black Rose as well. It's a book, it's a double album. The album is gonna be re-released in November. Um, it's also a short film called Shame, produced by Denzel Washington, starring myself. Jennifer Hudson. So if you look at the music video, it's a six and a half minute version of a 25 minute movie. And I believe we're going to win an Oscar. I believe Shane and Alan is going to win Grammys. Um, I believe it. And I'm walking in. We at it. Say, so holla at your boy. <laughs> but I think, um, and I wrote about this in my, in my new book, Black Rose. I think we're in a day and age, and it's really, really sad what I'm about to say. Cameraman, I, I want you to hear me this on this too. Stay focused, everybody. This is for everybody. We're in a day and age where people have decided, I don't love me unless you show me love. I don't believe in me until you believe in me. I don't even like me until you like me. You know what? I ain't shit until you tell me I'm the shit. I don't like the way I look until you validate me when I walk in the room. How is everybody wearing their hair? Well, let me wear my hair like that. What is everybody else doing? What they wearing? What they doing? What they, it's everybody is consumed in everybody. I often say, often tell people to hold their finger up and, and realize that there's nobody in the entire world with your fingerprint. And then I take that same finger and I put it up to your mind and I say, there's nobody in the world with your mind which means you're not born a Siamese twin. 
I don't have to think the way you think. My heartbeat will never be at the same pace as yours. I got my own blood. I got my own life. I got my own identity. I love me. Independent of you loving me, I believe in me. I love me. I'm doing me. And if you don't support me, I don't think any less of myself. I'm not going to lose no sleep because somebody has an opinion that may be different than mine. I'm grown. I got this. And so when you find yourself living your life within everybody's opinion, then you're living a pretty miserable life. Because you're so desperate for someone to validate you. Um, you'll drive yourself crazy. And so a lot of us are not conscious of it. I ain't shit unless I got a man. And then you get a ring, and then you want to show everybody, look, I got a ring. Miserable as hell. <laughs> but you got your ring. Because you want your girls to validate you, because supposedly that man took you off the market. Have you taken yourself off the market? Do you love yourself independent of a man showing up to validate you? Why are you going into a relationship empty, seeking for this man to fulfill you, and then when he leaves, you... <laughs> So it's a lot of different things that I'm talking about and addressing in this book and the album and just everything. And a lot of stuff I talk about is uncomfortable because, you know, it's the shit that nobody wants to talk about. But that's why I tune out from the world. I don't watch TV. You can't tell, you, you can't get me to name no athletes. <laughs> I don't know nobody. I'll be having football players, and I'll be like, you must be in the NBA because you're tall. I don't know who the hell you are. <laughs> I don't play no video games. I'm just completely in my own space. But I'm not sad, I'm not miserable, I'm not depressed, I'm not an introvert. I love to socialize, I love people. But I just believe that in order for you to nurture and develop your gifts and like fully seek and find God's visions, you have to tune out from what everybody is doing and just do your own shit. Right. Just do it. And that's it. So some of y'all got ideas and they will never be realized because as soon as you talk about it, somebody will be like, man, what are you talking about? And let your friend talk you out of God's vision. Shit. When people laugh at me, I look forward to it. I'm like, I'm on to something. You singing shame for this ain't got nothing to do with what they playing on radio. <laughs> My nigga. <laughs> Whoa, this is Tyrese, y'all. And real quick, um, I wanted to mention uh, the book that you did with Reverend Run. You guys have that developing into a television show? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we did a show. Uh, we got a show coming up um, with uh, with Oprah on OWN. I know y'all. I'm sorry. Uh huh. You know, we're excited. It's going to be um, this conversation. It's Fall? Like, I can't say when, can't okay. say what we're doing, I okay. can't say nothing. They got a gag order on me. If I say something, oh. I'll get tackled. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be special. And, what are you watching um, for? It's moments like this that will be on TV. It ain't going to be like dancing up and down the aisle and doing nothing corny. <laughs> that show will get canceled fast as hell. And we got to like have real conversations like this. So wow. It's going to be uh, it's gonna be interesting. We're very grateful that Oprah allowed for us to have this platform. The show is not called, um, the show is not called Manology, Manology by the no. way. No, it's not. Okay. So I can't tell y'all the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Tyrese, Black uh, Rose, I know. What'd you say? Oh. oh. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to say that I'm a woman of a particular age. And so it is just refreshing to come and listen to a young black man come speak so powerfully and so eloquently. And I guess because I am an English major and a teacher and all of that. God bless you. And I'm just very proud to say that you, a young black man, are doing something. You're doing something so wonderful. <laughs> I got the biggest hug coming for you. You have right. <laughs> All right, I know y'all want to get it. Black Rose, you got to get this. You got to get this. This is, he's a young man, but he's still the R&B OG. Tyrese, thank you. <laughs> Must be all kind of crazy for what I've done to you. 
I hope you understand that my heart is true.